Hi guys, Steve here. On this video, I'm going to show you how to get started in The Last Oasis. I'll be taking you through the tutorial in the starting area, explaining everything to make it easier for you, so you can fly through it when you start a game and not make any mistakes. And on the next video, I'll be giving you some tips on how to play the game better, plus showing you some PvP footage. So don't forget to click subscribe and click bell notifications on all, or you might miss those very important videos. After you've chosen which region and server you want to join on, make sure you're certain in your choice because you can't delete or remake your character at the moment. You're taken to the character creation page. You can select your face and skin colour at the top in skin type. Then clothing colour I've already selected mine as orange and brown. With body details you can select what battle scars you've got. Now we're on to hairstyles but you all look like we're from an 80s band. I'm certainly not going to go for a top knot so I think shave's the way for me to go. Next is facial hair. Give him a tash, beard, oh I don't like that, let's give him some stubble, let's try different colours, make him an old wise looking fella, eye colour, let's go for green, and head details your facial scars, let's make him look like he's had a few fights, and that'll do. Your name is selected automatically by your steam name. And it loads you into the starting oasis. Once you leave that oasis, it locks and you can never go back to it. You're connecting to the server, it shows you your zone map. And you get a starting intro. I'll show you that. Do you remember what I have told you? If you find your trousers full of sand, you've landed in the wastes. Now shake it off and begin moving. The sun is near. It will consume this place. Just wait for the old guy to waffle on a bit. You have spent your entire life rowing the flotilla. And now you have paid your debt. You will be taken to a pit in the wastes. Survive and return to me. I have more to tell you. Start collecting everything. And then the top left, you can see New Journey, that's where your starting tutorial quests come from. We wanted us to collect bushes for fibre, which we've completed, as there's a line through it. I'll grab the stones as well for later. Wood, you can see the logs laying on the floor. You press F to harvest things. Just hit level 2. I've got one point to spend on a character. Right, press C. Open up crafting. Now we need to create a beat stick, that's in weapons. Hold your left mouse button down over it to craft it when it appears in your inventory and drag it out and put it into one of your hotbar slots, one or two. If you press the left mouse button with nothing in your hands, you'll just use your fists. So click the corresponding key on your hotbar to equip the stick. The next mission's come up. It needs you to collect cactus because that's your source of water when you're starting off. If you notice in the bottom left, you've got a blue circle which is your water. That's half empty at the moment. The green crescent is your stamina and the red crescent is your health. Mine's at half at the moment. Hit the cactus with your beat stick to collect it. Collect the other stuff as well. And then we need to collect on the left. There we go, got enough. Let's grab a bit more though. More of a merrier. Now open up your inventory and right click on the cactus and that consumes it and fills your water up. Notice in the bottom left the blue's gone up. And that took us to level 3. An extra skill point. Wait for him to finish speaking. And the next quest comes up. Find a fragment in the walker debris. Look for an old wood structure. It's over here. Go to it. Click F. There we go. Got a fragment. The fragments are one of the most important things in game, as they are spent to learn new items to build. Unlike most games, when crafting skill points are safely locked to your character, and you usually get more when you level up, on the last oasis, these fragment skill points are actually physical items. You can get by killing the NPCs, or find them in boxes. Right click on them or press O to open up your tech tree, go to construction, then click and hold on the sand bed to learn it. One side of the earth is hot and barren. 
The other side is dark and covered in ice. Also, because the fragments are solid objects in your inventory, you can kill other players and steal theirs off them. That way you can learn how to build different objects quicker. The next mission wants us to build the sand bed. So click B to open up the build menu. Then interactables. The bed's the only thing you can build at the moment. So select it and place that down. Now if you die, you can respawn. The wilds are overrun with savages called Rupu. They watch you from the brush. Now we learn how to fight. Combat in Last Oasis is directional, meaning you'll swing a weapon in whichever direction you move a mouse. If you look up while pressing the left mouse button, you'll do an overhead hit. If you drag the mouse right, you do a swing to the right. And if you want to attack from the left, you move the mouse to the left and click the button. That will do the instant attacks. Plus you can do a hold attack, where you hold the left mouse button down to draw your weapon back into the ready position. Then move a mouse in the direction you want, and then let go of the mouse button. That monkey man I've just killed is called a Rupu. Click on a skull in intestines with F to loot it. A window opens to show you what it's got, and then hold F to loot everything. There's many Rupu with different difficulties scattered around Last Oasis. You can defend yourself with directional block by holding a right mouse button, then move a mouse in the direction the attack's coming from. Rupu once surrounded me on the Black Hills. They danced and ate the flesh of my companions, guzzling their psychedelic brew. Oh, he wants me to kill another Rupu. I killed it ahead of time, so I just find another one. I like to run in and whack it in the head. <laughs> Have some of that. Hold down F to loot everything again. You can also get filament from those as well, especially the bigger ones. A mysterious energy flows through the soil. If you kill these little creatures, you get hide. Let's get on with the other mission. Press P to open your character stats. We've got five points. Let's have uh, damage. It's up to you where you want to put yours. Now I need to unlock primitive bandages. They're an equipment tree. Click and hold, take two points to unlock, now I need to create some, press C, go to interactables, mouse over it and hold your mouse button down, and it converts the fibre into bandages. They're being built in your inventory, when you're done, grab them and put them into your hotbar so you can use them. Then click the corresponding key on your hotbar to use. In the oasis. Plants spill over the sand where nothing is left. You can see in the bottom left that the health crescents gradually fill in up red. The paler pink colour shows how much it will fill up to if it's not interrupted. However, if you get attacked, it will stop healing when you get hit. Now we need to build a campfire. It's one of the most important items in the game, as that's how you'll get all your fresh water. Press O to open up my tech tree, and instead of opening a section, you can click and hold over the icon, and that will make you learn it as well. I've collected a lot of resources, so I'm going to press B to open up the build menu. Then go crafting, and that's a campfire. Looks like it's got a pot on top of it. That's where you make the water. Side where you want to place it, hide it behind this rock. Press F on it, grab wood, put it in the centre for fuel. The red ring is each item of fuel being burnt. Now grab your cactus and put it on the left side, input, and click on the water icon and it will turn your cactus into purified water. As you see on the output on the right hand side. And that's the best way for you to get water at this moment. And while it's doing that, go off and do something else. Like killing these. Rah. Go back to it. That's done. Now if you right click on that, you'll consume a water and you get a lot more if you would by just eating cactus. Can be more precious than worm seed. A stranded merchant traded me all his possessions for a bottle. Now it wants to teach you how to make a makeshift bottle. Press O. Go to equipment. Click on makeshift bottle. Learn that. Now press C to craft it. 
Oh, I need wood, but I put all of it in the fire. So let's just take some of that out. Press C again, make a bottle. That appears in the inventory, and then right click it. You have two small pouch slots and it goes into one of them. Now drag a purified water into your bottle. And you'll drink the water automatically whenever you need it. As long as there is some in your bottle. I've done four out of five of the mission's water, so I just need to get some more cactus. Reach level seven, one more skill point. Go back to my campfire. Put a cactus in. There's wood to burn. And that's the main way to make water when you're starting off. Put the fifth water in the bottle. That mission's done. The flotilla is our last walking city. The center of the nomadic world. For those who do not ride the walker, it is the only refuge. Now it wants us to unlock the woodcutter's hatchet. This will help you cut trees down. Press O to open up your tech tree. Then go to equipment. Go down to the X. Click and hold. That learns it. Next, open up crafting. Go to weapons. Click and hold on the X. That makes it. Now drag it to your hotbar. I'm going to put it on slot 2. Click 2 on the keyboard to select it. Now we can start cutting down trees. Get wood and palm leaves for that. Then it wants us to harvest cactus with it. You get a lot more resources than you do by hitting it with a beat stick. If you return to the flotilla, you must ride the walker. It is written in the scrolls. Now we get to the fun bit of building your very first walker. Just harvest this last cactus. Hide behind the rock, in case I get attacked. Press O to open up your tech tree. Go to walkers. Click and hold on the firefly walker. I've learnt that now. Now I've got to build it. Find a good spot to place it. Press B to open your build menu. Go to walkers. Oh, it's red out, so we need some resources. Going to need a bit more fibre, so I'm going to collect that. Oh, got enough, go back to base. Let's place it behind the rock. Try and hide it so no one can see where I am. Now if you go up to it, it'll say craft and it tells you what resources it needs to build. Go to the yellow outlines first, as you'll have to build those in order. Then when you completed those, the rest of the walk will be buildable. Right, I need to go off and farm more resources. So I'm going to skip forward until I'm building each part of a walker. Right, go to the yellow outline. Click on that. You have to build those first. When you've done that, the white ones will change yellow. There's the other next to build. I need to farm some more resources. It'll take a few trips to finish a walker. I've killed a few Rupals and those little rat things. Got my resources. Gears. Now the legs. Oh. Craft that. There we go. One side. Then the other. There we go. We have our new walker. Our Dry built the walkers because there can be no rest. Keep only what you need. Abandon everything that cannot be carried. I just whoop it up this little monkey man. Click those. Right, the next mission is that it wants us to pack the campfire we made onto the walker. So we'll take the walker back to it. And to do that, Look at your walker and scroll your mouse wheel down to pack structures. Then go up to your campfire, press F to pack it up. That picks it up. Then board your walker, go up to it and press space. Huh. 
scroll down to pack structures again if it goes off. When you get an outline of your campfire and decide where to place it. I have received visions too. I have seen nations settle on the floor of the earth. And when I looked up, the moon was whole. I'll have it on the side and I can cook cactus just by walking up to it and placing the wooden cactus inside. Okay, that's done. The next mission is to craft a cargo hold inside the walker. This lets the walker carry items. Look at the walker and scroll down to open storage. Wait for the firefly walker box to disappear. Then click upgrades. Click and hold on the cargo. That will gradually build the cargo space inside your walker. Then click and hold on water. When that's finished you'll be able to store water in your walker and use it as a mobile spawn point if you've got enough water inside. Now it wants us to put 30 water into the walker container. So we're going to have to make some more purified water. Go to your campfire, drag the firewood in and the cactus. Click water in the recipes. Can I make another jar? No, not yet. So I'm going to go off, get more resources. Gathered enough to make another water bottle. Right click on that, you can hold two at once. That'll help me transfer the water over. If you only hold five, when you've got enough fragments, I definitely advise learning the next water bottle, as that holds a lot more. Go to the campfire, drag the water into your water bottles. Like so. And then go to your walker, open storage, and drag the water into your walker's water container that's in the middle. Same again. Drag the water over. I think I need some more cactus, so just go off and farm that. Just waiting for a cactus to turn into purified water. Drag that down. One more. Drag that into the bottle. And then put it in my walker. There we go. That mission complete. When you face an adversary you cannot beat. Remember the grappling hook bolted to your arm and take flight. It is a nomad's greatest weapon. Now we learn the grappling hook. Press zero. Go to equipment. Hold down onto the grappling hook. Press C to craft. Now what's it going to be under? Tools. Oh, need to get some more fibre. Okay, back in a minute when I've done that. Now I've got enough. Press C to craft. Hold down the mouse button to learn. And then right mouse button when it's in your inventory. It'll be placed onto your arm. And you'll see a little yellow target reticle. It grows higher than the tallest water. Seek the mystical fruit it now wants us to practice with the grappling hook. Look in a direction and press the middle mouse button down. It will shoot a line. Then hold E to drag you up. And Q to lower yourself. Middle mouse button again to disconnect yourself. Now it wants us to practice climbing ledges. Go to a rock. Shoot up close to the top of it. Reel yourself in. Press space and you'll climb on top of structures. Drop down and do that again. Aim for the top, reel yourself in, keep pressing space, and you'll climb up. Level 13. The between the tribes is fragile, because we are swayed by greed. Let's put points in. A nomad will forget his need health, as some stamina, as that helps your grappling hook as well and run. Speed to get away from bad guys. 
a little bit of damage, and that'll do. Right, for the next mission, it wants us to go to Rupu camps, enter their little huts and smash the urns inside them and loot them. Plus kill 10 Rupus. Head back to Walker. Press M to open up your map. This is the oasis you're in. Little arrow is you. And those orange diamonds with exclamation marks on are Rupu camps. Let's turn around. Head out of this area. Checking the map, make sure I'm in the right direction. There's also a compass in the bottom right. I always like double checking with the main map though. Yep, heading out in the right direction. Now as we walk against momentum, it will speed up to its top speed. The mission wants us to kill Rupus, but you can kill them anywhere. Now you don't have to kill the ones in the camps, you can kill the ones on the outside as well. Got another fragment from him. They all count. Go back in. Now you see that wreckage in front of us? There's usually goodies, boxes to loot. Two more fragments. I think that's everything from here. Disconnect. Sometimes there's little boxes, bags. And if you're lucky, big crates. I'll show you how to break those open in the next video. I want to work my way to a Rupu camp. And stop if I find anything interesting. Head towards any derelict structures. A destroyed walker. If you press shift, you use stamina to move your walker quicker. You can also press H for it to auto walk. Right, just get my stamina back. There's usually something upstairs. Keep an eye out for anything else. There we go. So click on the bag. F, get a fragment, and we've got an improved bottle. Then smash a bigger box. Its health is in the top middle. When it reaches zero, you can loot it. There's nothing stopping you riding around the map and doing this if you want. So I'd advise stopping at every structure you see. You need to watch out the train you go over. Because if it's an awkward drop, you could end up flipping your walker. Like so. If that happens, get off it. Go to it, scroll down, flip walker, then hold F, bar will go up. When it fills up, the walker will flip back onto its legs. If your walker's flipped and one of your legs is destroyed, You'll need to go into building, walker, and then build a new leg for it. And once that's done, you can flip it over again. You can also flip other people's walkers. That big tree looking thing in front of us is a giant cactus. Go up to it. Use your grappling hook. Reel yourself in. And you can collect the fruit from the top. <gasps> You need one of these to make an improved water jar. Then lower yourself back down again. If you drop too high, you can get full damage. We're a different difficulty in Rupu. This one's got a headdress and a much bigger weapon. Oh, it's whooping me. Oh, thought you might win. Oh, I just won. As you can see in the bottom left, my health is really low. Use one of my bandages. It's on a cooldown before you can use it again. I see a structure in front of me, so let's drive to that. There it is on the top of that hill. Let's 
Sometimes you find bags, dead bodies. We're going to find a barrel this time. It's got health in the top middle. So you keep hitting it. When it goes down to zero health, you can loot it. Two more fragments and some XP. I'm almost at Arupu camp. Go to build. Interactables. Then put the sand bed down. So you have to spawn from it. Right. They're one of the huts you need to get into. See the Rupu's running around. Right, I've saved time and cleared most of them out. Dead body. There's one trapped behind the legs. They're not the brightest. Come on, have some of that, mate. Have some of that. Don't like it up them. Right, you're looking for an entrance. And you're going to use your grappling hook to get up to it. You need to pull up. Let yourself down if you get trapped underneath it. Press space to climb aboard. Or middle mouse again to decouple if you're inside. And you'll find pots inside. Go up to them and smash them and loot them. That's part of a quest. There's another one there. It's that vine in front of the entrance. You can click that. Smash this pot. Sometimes for a bit of a pain to hit, so you've got to attack it at different angles. There we go. Got no beat stick. Looks like a little chief is coming after me. I'll we'll fight with him. Flopped. Hit him. Hit him again. Come on. Rawr. Got him down. Collect all. Click some fibre. I need them for bandages. And go back to your walker. F3 opens your tutorial missions. And carry on and try and find the next dwelling. Right, now I'm going to show you what happens when you're losing a fight. Right, it's hit me. And I've still got health in the bottom left, so I'm not dead yet. I'm on my knees and you can crawl around. But it was a 30 seconds countdown for me to get up. Now, if you're playing with somebody, they can come along and help you up. Or you could press space to give up. Now, if there's a player attacking you, they can come and finish you off. And steal all your stuff. Just wait for it to get down to zero. And you wake up. And it tells you in the top middle of the screen you have been revived. And if I get knocked down again in the next three minutes, I'll instantly die. So finish him off. Loot him. If you run out of water, your health starts going down pretty quick. The screen will start flashing. When it hits zero, you'll die. All the stuff you were carrying remains where you died. I could spawn at a bed I put down, which is a fair distance away. We have water in the Firefly Walker, so wait for the countdown to finish. Then click respawn. That will use 20 water up, so that's my only spawn until I fill it up again. And you'll appear on the walker. Pick up all your stuff. Because I'm going to fight and get myself killed again. Right, that's the second time I've gone down. Remember, there's not enough water to spawn in the walker. The walker's on top of it, but you get little graveyard markers where you died. Just waiting for the counter. If you don't have enough water and you try and spawn at a walker... It'll ask you if you want to spawn in the vicinity. They'll spawn you randomly in the desert, and it's usually a fairly long walk back to where you died. Spawn back at my sand bed and make my way to the walker. To get in the huts and destroy the jars, you can fight your way through other repos. Otherwise, you can just run past them all and use your grappling hook. Try and get near the entrance. Start whacking the jar. If 
get a lecture. Hit it from different directions. It's a bit janky. There we go. Got it in the end. Collect it. Also take the Ripu vine, because you'll need that for later. Oh, forgot to disconnect. Then drop down and run for it back to the walker. And try and get out of there before they get to you. I'm going to take my walker to safety because the next mission on the tutorial is to build wings for it. Right, out of the range of them all. Press O to go to your tech tree. Go to walkers. Firefly walker wings. Click and hold on those. There you go, they're learnt. Now get off your walker. And press B. Go down to walker parts. And you'll see some wings. Look at your walker and you'll see a big coloured ball. Click left mouse button to place it. And you'll get an outline of a wing. That's just a template, you'll need to put resources there to build it. And go to the other side, do the same. There are your wings. Now move around until it says craft. Click it. Whoops, got inside. There we go. You will see the energy that nourishes life. It is all that is left of Nibiru. Your wings are purple with a sun logo because you aren't part of a clan. I'll show you how to create one in a minute. But first it wants me to open a world map. This is a local map. World map's at the top middle. And it'll show you where your oasis is and how much water you'll need to carry to get to the next oasis. As you can see, the ones far away take a lot of water, but your small firefly walker can't carry. If you're playing with other people, you can create a clan. Friendly fire will be still on, but you'll be able to see where they are on the map when you get close to them. Click G, that brings up the clans menu. Then you can select the flag and the colour. These are the different colours. You haven't got a really good orange one. I suppose that's the closest. I'll quickly go through all the flag symbols so you can see which one you want to pick. can have an ass. <laughs> Somebody sticking their fingers up. Might go for that one. That's all of them in game at the moment. Let's go for that guy flipping the bird. Name the clan. Let's call it Nooblets. Then if your friends are close, you can go to recruitment and join them up. Clan created, have a look at your wings, and have changed colour to your clan, and you've got a new logo there. Your next tutorial mission is to drive your walker into the desert and find a new oasis. But do not do that. Do not leave this safe oasis. Because once you leave, you cannot come back to it. What you want to do now is drive around this oasis, killing Rupu, to get fragments so you can learn more things to build. You want to concentrate on a good armour and weapon, then put all your effort into building a second dinghy walker, as it's bigger, can carry a lot more equipment, especially water, and with it you can travel to other oasis further away. So do not leave this oasis until you've built a dinghy walker. While I'm here, I'll show you one of the most important things you need to learn, and that's how to log off safely without losing your stuff or having your walker raided. Stop your walker somewhere safe, and then press escape, then click transfer to lobby in the bottom left. That will start a countdown, and if your walker isn't attacked, by the time the countdown finishes, it will teleport to lobby and be safe. Anyone on the walker will be transferred to the lobby with it, and if you get off a walker, the walker will vanish, and then you'll be left there on foot. NPCs can stop the countdown if they move a walker. So can players. Those cats can almost flip this one. The second way to log out is move to the edge of the oasis. 
Make sure you're heading in the right direction. Pretty cat's chasing me. I'll do a video on how to kill the cats very easily after this one. You'll see a sandstorm when you're getting close to the edge. There we go. Then press L and it will transfer you and the walker to the lobby instantaneously so there's no countdown where you can safely log out. Here if you've got enough water you can travel to different servers as well. Notice the name of the servers in the top right. You can travel to other servers you didn't start on. When you're spawning back in the game, I advise always taking a walker with you, even if it's a small one. Otherwise you'll be walking on foot, or your friends would have to pick you up. Here you can see the selection of walkers in that clan. I'm on the dinghy one with the green icon. Click it to unselect it. The icon will change to no walker, that will mean you're spawning on foot, not advised. Click it again to select it, and then hold down the left mouse button over your oasis. And you're spawning in the server where the orange hexagon side is. And you're back in game with whatever walk you chose. If you choose to move out of the starting oasis with your firefly and not build a dinghy like I advise, then you'll probably have only enough water to go to one different oasis. When you get there, everyone else will be on dinghies or bigger walkers, so you'll probably lose to them in a fight. And you're going to have to build a dinghy anyway there, but instead of noobs running around trying to kill you, you'll have people on big walkers who know what they're doing, so it'll be much harder for you. So again, don't leave a starting oasis until you've got a dinghy. This is my first video to help you fly through the tutorial, and if it was helpful, please like and subscribe. Also click the bell on all notifications, as I'll be doing videos on other useful tips. There's links to other videos at the end. Comment on what you would like to see. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye.